What are you guys, uh, Coast Guard or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. What are you, what are you guys out to? What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This one, another junky boat revival on a 1965 Larson, 17 foot. I guess we'd call this like a runabout. It's got an outboard on it and she's not so darn junky. Uh, so we're down here at the Bristol Yacht Club on the Delaware River. This place has been here for over 75 years. I uh, actually thought about maybe even becoming a member. And quick look at the boat. Doesn't look like we have too much work cut out for us. I love this old plexiglass windshield. Definitely gives it that like 60s look. Registration, 2018 was the last time it was on the water. So shouldn't have too many problems, right? Just fire it up and go. I do have paperwork on the, the boat, not for the trailer, but that's pretty typical. Uh, so coming down, first thing I noticed is this keel. It's got a nice sharp keel on it. Look at that. I think it definitely split some waves, uh, but unfortunately it's got some damage that people fiberglassed over a little sloppy a uh, nice thing about fiberglass though is you can do it sloppy and it seems to hold up just fine overall I'm missing a spare which is intact here looks like it did have hydraulic brakes but somebody maybe welded that part I'm not sure I'll deal with that later two inch ball just kind of doing a quick walk around we're gonna hook this up and get her on out of here and home uh, good jack on it. Things are looking great. How's the other side of this repair? You know, I'm, I'm good with that. I mean, being a boat from the 60s, I don't, I don't know what's up with all these little holes that have been patched. I don't know. Sturdy enough for me, though. Trailer tires. Looks like it's got 13s. Some bearing buddies. Made in USA. Uh, and these are in decent shape, actually. Heavy duty steel fenders, sweeping around. I, I hate the blue flames on it. That is just, in my opinion, hideous. But hopefully they haven't been on there too long when we take it off. Oh, actually, this this has been clear coated over. The boat's painted, not too shocked, right? Uh, looks like an Evinrude, I guess. I, I don't know, probably an Evinrude 90. Um, two stroker, more than likely. Props in good shape. Got the muffs on there. Let's just pull this off real quick. Take a gander. Yes, a two-stroker V4 actually. Some silicone on these head gaskets. Not locked up. Feels like it's got good compression too. And yeah, not seeing any mouse nest or anything uh, bad in here. All wirings, everything's there. I mean, the heck. The uh, throttle linkage is free. All right, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. The transom has a trail of active ants going up and down into the boat. Oh, well, like most boats, it's got ants. And feels like a pretty sturdy transom. You know, I'm rocking on the motor. I don't see it flexing. That's good enough for me. I'm sure it's got water in it. Like most old boats are gonna be waterlogged. Uh, so hopping in, we have a, a bimini top. And let's, ooh. Well, actually, these floors, somebody's definitely done work on this in a not too distant time. What I'm trying to say is these floors are sturdy. This, this, either somebody laid plywood over this, or maybe they did it right and replaced all the stringers and such. A fancy quartz clock. Uh, is our fuel filter, a water separator empty steel gas tank that sounds empty up front this is our communication device <laughs> i guess it seems like an unfinished project uh oh got a key with a floater oh yeah the shift linkage operates cables aren't seized up uh i guess this originally came with an omc yeah unless that is an omc i i don't even know I just assumed it looked kind of like an Evan Rude to me based on the little I do know. Steering's a little loose, but operational. So the cables, again, aren't all seized and very basic wire. Let's see. Yeah, this has uh, got ants all up in, up in there. Now, one thing I'm not liking is I don't see a floor access. This is just kind of sitting here. Yeah, like how the heck do you access the floor to get rid of everything living under there? 
Um, this has been repurposed. It's got a phone number on it, some old plywood coming in here. Okay. So, this is all screwed, screwed down. But there's our bilge area. And yeah, I guess we'll just have to assume the stringers are fine. What the? Why is there a stick back here? I don't know. I'm not sure about this boat, guys. The mud jobbers over there. Uh, I mean, it's dirty. All right, so. We'll just have to assume everything underneath is fine and live with the ants. Over starboard aft, it's got a pull-out light on it. Gotta love that, kind of a, a nice design. Said always oh, go and look for your light. It's right there. Twist lock into place that doesn't work. We'll get that lubed. Anyway, I think it's time to hook up to this, air up the tires a touch, and get her on home. You gotta get her cocked up. No power trim on this. And I noticed this is an outboard marine corporation. OMC, Walkigan, Wal Illinois, USA. 90 horsepower at 5,000 RPM. It's a model E90 MLCRD. Jeez, gotta be an easier way to do that. Wait a second, does this have power trim? Or is, maybe that's just a shock. I don't know, I'm not sure about these old OMCs, guys. You probably know better than me. We'll find out later, uh, but this is a stop. So, you know, can't go down. See that locks in right here. There's no lines going to this. It's just like a kick up shock, I guess, in case you hit something, it'll kick the motor up without me being locked into place. Looks like maybe we're missing a lower cover here or somebody cut a hole in that. All in all, a really nice boat for free. No complaints. but saw them bouncing real low once they hit the road, so I'm gonna top them off. Did notice the lug nuts are on backwards. At least they got them right on one side. Wow, I just rookie moved super hard. Got a deep paper cut as I was walking back around and went to spin the prop. I guess I have a bad habit of doing that. And somebody put a razor sharp, sharp edge right there. That is, it's like knife edge. Few months later and finally ready to try and fire this up hopefully it doesn't need too much i'm excited to rip her uh, this is what my yard looks like from my neighbor's yard i'm very blessed to have just the best neighbor ever who has allowed me to kind of expand over here so that's where the fury is that is coming in the next video or two cannot wait got some parts and we finally have a title i know i've been talking about that for a while but that uh, that's coming soon so let's 
let's uh, go throw a battery in this and I tell you, you could buy a mansion anywhere in the world, spend all the money in the world, but good neighbors, it's priceless. Absolutely priceless. A bit of a tight squeeze around this turn. I gotta point out one funny thing about my neighbor. He got these rocks delivered, oh, probably about three years ago. He used a few around the trees and the rest just sat in the driveway in a pile for like, I don't know, six months. I was like, you want me to plant this for you? We can move in the yard. But he likes having them in the driveway. I think the boat in the yard, we can now scoot this caddy over there, which by the way, <laughs> 1.7 million views on this. Unbelievable. Oh, I think this is going to deserve some kind of part two and maybe some money put in it. I do have it listed up on Facebook Marketplace for 1900 and I think it's worth every bit of that with the, the good engine and transmission and all the parts on here. Wait a second. I said in the first video we were gonna listen to these horns, so let's let's see. It's got the, the center optional trumpet horn. That's awesome. Hopefully that sound brings back some memories for some of you guys who used to see these cruising around. We got her juiced up. Minus this wire, don't know where the yellow goes, but it's got this pair running up and that comes over, splits off, so it goes nowhere, the other end goes right here. Man, who did all this wiring? It's terrible looking. Ah, uh, that goes up to the, the bilge pump. We don't need that. This is probably for the speedometer. Whoop. We got no starter engagement, which is fine. I'm sure, it's just uh, a little corroded. Yes, yeah, he's just freewheeling. Well, the Bendix isn't seized up. Let's see. There it goes. All right, just need a little, little bump touch. I would say we're off to a good start. There we go. Just shove her down. That's it. Oh. Well, quite a bit of water. Normal though. I've been sitting up with all the rain. Not that I have any skin in the game on this one, but you guys know like always uh, on these boats I like to check the lower unit oil. I'll take the, uh, the fill up top off. And this top plug. I hear some air seeping out. You gotta be careful when you, you take these. It's a good idea to take a vent off first because I remember removing one on the bass dumpster and it shot oil all over my face. It sits out in the sun um, but that way if there's any water in this oil I'd rather know and drain it before cranking it over and then making it all milky uh, we got nothing coming out of the, uh, the fill there and how about the drain if there's any water it will have separated and settled on the bottom all right uh, we got just clean gear oil coming out actually very clean I'm good with that Get it running, we'll top it off. It's like, will it run? Will it run? Lately I've been getting very lucky, but you just never know when something's been sitting or if people are telling the truth. That being said, I think we'll give her a crank, but slide the muffs on first so the water pump police don't attack me down below in the comments. And let's listen to that crank over. Who knows, maybe I'll get lucky, it just fires right up. That's pretty good. You know, I never heard one of these V4s crank over, so definitely hear some compression. For fuel, we got the steel tank under there. Didn't check what's inside yet, but that hose comes. It's nice he kept this covered to keep it from sun rotting, along with the primer bulb. It's a smart man to do that. Because, you know, it's a full dry rod. So there's our fuel inlet. Comes in here, goes to what looks like a water separator, which was loose. Let's see what's in a water separator. Still good seal. Oh, well. Oh, that's, I don't know. That smells like nasty fuel. That comes out, goes over to the fuel pump. Before messing with the gas though, let's just uh, check for some spark while we're, we're here. 
You can see somebody is messing with the uh, had the, had the heads off. That's a red RTV. This one's roped into place. It's unthreaded, but just cross-threaded. Crossing my fingers, we continue this luck streak and get some spark. Here we go. Nada. Wait a second, I forgot I turned the key off. Yes, we do have spark. It looks a little, a little bit weak, but it's jumping. I mean, that sounds bone dry to me. And actually, did a pretty good job here. Is that a, is that a stick he fiberglassed into the boat? I have never in my life seen something like that. That is so, then he zipped two screws into it. I mean, it's great that he has the, the filter, inline filter on it. it. Actually looks kind of fresh too. It's completely bone dry. Well, I was gonna roll the dice and throw some two smoke fuel in her. Give it a pump, but believe it or not, I have zero gas here. Just checked my jugs. I'm uh, fully cleaned out. Oh, that gives me a good excuse to take this Jeep out on such a beautiful evening. It's uh, 70 degrees out. Got my makeshift aluminum cover on it, keep, keep things dry. video on this Jeep too uh, on the second channel kind of doing just a little bit more TLC and such These guys are over there rocking a $20,000 K&M I ain't got nothing on the CJ7 I think I'm into this for like 1500 bucks or something maybe a touch more with the seats would be a good idea to clean this tank out first or see what's in there but be alright So my gut's telling me that this is not going to work too well priming it all the way from there through that filter, but I guess we'll take the uh, take it off right here, see if we can get some fuel coming from that tank. I think that little inline filter he put on the suction side of the fuel line, that's, that's not going to work. Well, that was convenient. Drive right of the hose on there anyway. So we'll just drop this right into our bucket of fuel. Yes, you like me now. Of course, this little primer is supposed to have a check ball in it too, and I don't, I don't hear that working. Maybe this one doesn't have it. There we go. There's that fresh gas. Oh. Um, We'll try hooking it back up to the tank another time, but for now, we're good to go. Our water separator hooked back up, and we can pump the carbs up. Oh, okay. Don't know if you guys saw that, but you can see this gasket is not sealing on the pump. Yeah, we'll just pop it off on the top up here. We've got that new and improvised fuel tank. It's chemical resistant, three gallon. Works very well. And we can open the petcock. And I can hear those carburetor bowls filling up. Let's see if we crack one of the screws loose on the bottom. I mean, realistically, oh, all the gas is probably evaporated and it's just a little bit of oil sitting on the bottom. Instead of a drop of something, ooh, that looks like water came out of the carburetor. Okay. Now we got some fuel coming to the carb. You guys didn't see that, but just a ton of crud poured out of the bottom. Which is to be expected because all the gas evaporates and then the oil within the gas sits on the bottom. And to get these screws back in, can't fit my big old hands in there. So on this screwdriver, you ever see one of these? Of course you have. You just never use it. Look at that. I mean, it's a little bent, but can hold the flathead in place. Love it. Boy, is that convenient. That's one of those tools you just don't use that often, but when you need it, you need it. Or should I say it's very convenient. Well, it's just about dark now. I fiddled with one of those screws I dropped down there and finally got it out. But if you've ever dropped anything metal inside of a boat, 
Nine times out of ten, it's stainless steel, and it's kind of hard to fish it out. <laughs> Let's see if it'll fire up now. Got a bunch of crud off the bottom of the bowls. Flush it out. Um, I'm feeling confident, kind of, halfway confident. I can see water coming out of the head gasket. Here we are. Considering that this was shooting a bunch of water out, I think it's a good idea to pop the head off before taking it out on the water. Um, I did check the tightness of all these and they're all, they're all snug and good. But I figure we'll do a compression check before we disassemble. See what we're looking like. Oh yeah, definitely water getting in this cylinder. Whew. Yep, water getting in there too. No sign of water on the plugs on this side. Ooh, we got nothing on the top cylinder. You can see this gauge a little bit better. Barely budging the needle. We got uh, about a hundred down here. Same up top on this side. And same on the bottom. So let's take this side off. Maybe we'll get lucky and it's just a severely blown head gasket. So this top part is just where the water comes flowing around the heads. Now we remove these and we'll uh, see what the cylinder looks like. Well, the head gasket, yeah, this side looks completely blown out. I don't know if you can see that. Definitely a lot of water getting in there. Holy smokes, this cylinder's just all full of milk. Here's a closer look. You can see this has got the cross flow pistons on it with the, the big dome on them. This on the left side is the, the transfer ports. So when the piston's going down, it pushes a fresh air and fuel charge up into the combustion chamber. And then that's the exhaust on the right side. As the piston comes up, it seals off both of those ports, builds compression and then you get your spark just before top dead center. Boom, you can see on this piston, a lot of evidence of uh, detonation or pre-ignition, but this thing was probably running lean from, my guess would be a crank seal up on the top, sucking unmetered air in, ca causing it to, to run really hot, and that might be why we're having these issues. But uh, then the, so it gets pushed down on its power stroke, and the first thing to open should be you know, the uh, exhaust side. So all that pressure pushes the exhaust out and once majority of it's out we see our transfer ports have opened up so that uh, pressure from underneath the piston is pushing that fresh air and fuel charge back in. It takes care of everything in two strokes. Noticing these little rubber plugs, uh, you used to see in anodes in cooling jackets but I suppose these are probably just to direct uh, the flow, the water flow around the, the cylinders or keep it in there. And now for some of the bad stuff I'm seeing. Now if we pan down, we do have a crack on the block right there, but that's on the water side, so we can, uh, you know, we could write stuff that, and that should be fine. Here's a glance at that head gasket. You can see the, the top is all kind of blown out, and I was thinking, oh, maybe somebody left the bolts loose, and that is possible. 
So that's definitely shot. However, on the cylinder head itself, uh, do you guys see any problems? No, this is the top one and it has burned a hole right through there. So that's gonna be pretty hard to repair. I think I'll hop on eBay, see if uh, we can't find a, a cheap used one. And also more evidence um, of it running really hot and lean. You see how it burned all that uh, aluminum away. No, I just went on eBay, found a used cylinder head for only 35 bucks. Uh, with shipping, it was 53. Ordered that and then $29 for a cylinder head gasket kit from Amazon. I think I'm willing to drop that into it, uh, but really, it's, it's kind of a rookie move just slapping that together because again, there's probably an issue that caused it. And then as far as the fuel pump, I'm gonna get one that replaces this older style. This is uh, the VRO variable ratio oiler, I think, or something. I believe it's already been bypassed because there's no oil tank anywhere that I found or any oil lines going to this. It's leaking, it's bad, but we're gonna get one that uh, supersedes this and just pumps fuel. Check it out, these two by fours have a plastic on top of them to uh, prevent the scratching of the boat. Well, you girls are being nice and quiet. Oh, dirt bathing, are you? A few days later and we got some parts in. This used cylinder head looking pretty nice. Not sure why the one side's super clean, but uh, it's not burned. You know, it doesn't have a hole burned in it like the other one. So I got a basic fuel pump that should be able to bolt onto the block gaskets and i'm excited to slap this back together so we can take it out and see if it blows up again right but before slapping it back together i do have to wrap up with these guys i had some subterranean yellow jackets so i put the sander on the ground to vibrate them out with the vacuum and i don't know looks like at least a few hundred so far and as soon as they take flight it kind of gets stuck right in there Shut down the vacuum cleaner, plugged to the end for now. And you know, I hate to be a murderer, but wasps are just the worst. So I'll let the rest go into their uh, nest down there and then we'll vacuum the rest out tonight. I especially wanted to get rid of them because they're mighty close to my honeybees and you know, wasps can go inside the, the honeybee hives and just, just wreak havoc. So these guys are no problem. Occasionally they sting me, but in general, they, uh, they don't create an issue and we get honey from them. So it's a win-win. And now time to scrape away. It's one of the least favorite things I like doing automotive related is scraping gaskets. Could always hit it with uh, gasket remover chemicals. I think I'll just take a seat in the old gasket scraping chair and uh, you know, relax. Uh, by the way, might have some new shirts coming. My buddy Nat made this one, uh, it's by Dickies. The blanks are kind of expensive. They're like, I think over $30 for them. But a little logo on there, and then like custom could put whatever name you want on it. But figure I'll wear it for a little bit. And uh, if you guys would like a shirt like this, is Dickies work shirts, you know, let me know. We'll, uh, we'll put that in the, the store. No nonsense, no hell.com. A lot of corrosion on here. Got this cleaned up good enough. Uh, that crack down there, clean that out real good. We'll, we'll jam it full of the right stuff. Permatex, silicone, and the water. It's only a water jacket, so it'll be all right. And I uh, was running this straight edge across here. We're looking, we're looking pretty good. I do want to chase these head bolt threads though, because they're kind of crudded up in there. That should be what? 5 sixteenths by 18. Actually, I'd like to just use three to heck are those. Yeah, there. Use these little uh, chasers. There go. Five sixteenths by eighteen. As I can see down in there, they got a bunch of corrosion. So chase these, make sure they're nice and clean. Cylinder head, I uh, checked out with the flat edge. We're looking pretty good, but I'd like to hit it with some emery cloth and the glass. 
However, I just went over in my outside storage and uh, somehow water filled in my uh, sandpaper and emery cloth bin. And it's a shame because look at this giant stack of emery cloth. Actually, um, it's completely soaked and it stinks really bad. But I got this stuff on eBay many years ago for dirt cheap because it was already salvaged. You see how it's printed salvage on there? It already had like slight water damage, but it, it was totally fine. And I got so many years of use out of it. And I got like a giant box of it. Anyway, now it's destroyed completely. I suppose some of this is still salvageable. I mean, you guys know emery cloth is great and it's not cheap either. Yeah, it's just still usable. I'll be uh, looking for bulk emery cloth again. Can never have enough. Oh yeah, that's looking great. I'm gonna wire wheel our head bolts. Get the corrosion off. The right stuff. Best silicon ever by Permatex. I get that crack all cleaned out. I'll push it in from the bottom and top. Get it all pushed into that crack. And yes, I'm reusing these little deflectors. Probably should have replaced them, but uh, it's gonna be fine. Both surfaces clean and dry. Head gasket in proper orientation. Let's drop this on we got the uh threads was slopped up with some high temp thread sealant too this is the satisfying part right All right, next day, all together, do a quick compression check. See what we got. Oh yeah, up at 90. That's what I'd like to see. Did order a set of QL82 spark plugs on Amazon, but you can see, look at the package, new Champion spark plugs, QL82C, 931M. But then inside, it's not. It's a uh, RFN14LY, which if I jam that in there, it would not be good so these are pretty toasted but i'll have to order another set and run these for now and again we're ditching this vro pump the uh, variable ratio oiling system because that was leaking and i'm not going to deal with it i think it's already been bypassed anyway got this little guy that will bolt on to the side of the block see there was this little nipple on there to send vacuum to the vro but uh, this will just go right in its place and we do need to go find some screws that are longer though. Is these is the right thread, but not long enough. Which I don't think I'm gonna have in stainless. If I have anything, it would be well, if I had stainless, might be in the miscellaneous stainless sizes. Yeah, I have one in there. I do, but they're just a scotch too short. Well we go to the miscellaneous bolts, non-stainless. Should have something for there uh, in here. Yep, these two Allen pan heads. I think these are actually off of the lawnmower holding the coil, but uh, they'll, they'll work. I'll do it. And you know, now that I'm looking at this, I think that oil link tank used to be right here, mounted in this location. So that's been gone for some time. Before tossing this old pump in the trash though, I will take the stainless Torx head screws and check it out. A nice spring it might even be stainless and i bet you the only reason this was leaking because I, I don't see a, a diaphragm torn uh, i think it was just leaking because uh this is hasn't had gas in it in a while and the, the rubber or diaphragm kind of just uh you know wasn't swelled like like it would be and i don't know what these are made of if they're nitrile or whatever but like this will go in my gas and oil resistant rubber section because this stuff is tough. All right, and it's go time. Let's see if, how this runs with uh, a little bit more compression. 
running on the on the auxiliary tank still. For some reason we're not hitting the bottom cylinder. Looks like we had the uh, plugs flopped around there, but we are getting good spark down here. Got great pressure. It's a little gloomy out today and I definitely don't have all the kinks worked out yet but I think we're gonna dunk this in the water and you know see what it does uh, I'll grab some tools fire extinguisher you know the usual safety stuff uh, flip these lug nuts around since I remember somebody's got those on wrong and yeah we'll see uh, you know, fingers crossed Maybe we'll get lucky if not we'll be uh, swimming back I guess <laughs> I guess I could see why somebody put them on that way. They are slightly smaller than they should be. And for boat stuff, we got some junk in here. We got an anchor, some fenders, maybe a bilge plug or a boat plug. Well, look who decided to hop in with me to go for a ride. I've been convinced. She's got some courage, or balls, because... Well, I have a life jacket. Where's the lid? Oh, it's in there. I have a feeling I'll be taking them off a bunch, so... <laughs> Hopefully she goes. You got a buddy, though, in case she doesn't. Yeah, I'll call Greg. All right, cool, <laughs> Have fun. Thanks. This boat very well might Did you break tell them out. that Scott let you store it in his yard for yeah. like two months? Yeah, they see me. Yeah. What a great neighbor he is. Couldn't ask for a better. The best. The best. the best, Jerry. The best. The best, Jerry. The best. It's my fault. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Only two other trailers here. That's what's nice about a Monday. I'm not feeling too confident. <laughs> well, you started it at home, right? I'm feeling like there's going to be a lot of comments of people telling me I'm an idiot for just dropping it in the water. But that's what we do here at No Nonsense No How. We roll the dice. Lots of dice rolling. You can see this boat's been stored in the water at some point. See all like the corrosion line on there? Is there a duck on board? Yeah, go ahead. You can see the telltale fishers flowing great. So water pump is A-OK. -okay. Kind of odd that the, all the exhaust is coming out of those two little ports. It's got a little spit coming out too, but I thought the exhaust was supposed to come out of the bottom. I don't know. First. Nice. Right. Real good shifting. We're ready to go. I don't know if it's running all four cylinders, but Sounds good enough. Oh, here goes nothing. Uh oh. 
Did you bring a paddle? Yeah, yeah. It's me. <laughs> I'll swim. <laughs> Hashtag boat life. There's nobody here to help us. It's a good thing I grabbed that jump pack from the truck too. Not. We only got not. one battery, folks. Great. Let's just double check we're not taking any water on too. Yep, bone dry down there. Looking good. No drips. No drips. Oh wait, not, does this thing work? Can we call someone? Not one drip. Hello? SOS, somebody, come! You're help holding us. it backwards. Hello? Hello? Anybody? Let's check our fuel pressure. Uh, mm. Call that about 8 psi. Yeah, we got good fuel pressure. Go ahead. I know this thing was running kind of poorly at the house, but it was too loud to run in the backyard with the neighbors there. It was just, we had to get it in the water to quiet it down a little bit. Yeah, we got a fuel delivery problem. You want to drop anchor? No. No, we'll be okay. It's not the worst idea. I mean, we're not even moving. I know. I kind of noticed that too. Yeah. A three-hour tour. <laughs> Leak. Listen to that, the idle comes right back down. I mean, if there is, it's not substantial. Still not idling all four though, but it feels like when we're under throttle, load definitely hitting all four. You can hear it kind of bouncing in between. Well, we'll call that a successful maiden voyage so far. Now we can just kind of hang out, enjoy the nice weather. Sun's peeking back out. Wearing a life vest for you guys. They, they always call me out if I don't wear a life vest on a new boat. They should. I know, it's true. Because I can swim, but if you hit your noggin, you can't swim if you're knocked out. So keep your head above the water with a life vest. Actually, the ones around your neck are probably the safest because they really keep your head up, you know? Yeah. These are like... <laughs> Is that your, your turtle shell? Do I, do I look like a turtle? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Oh, there's a wasp coming out of it, though. Stop it. She already checked Get it. Get it off. <laughs> Filling up the gas. Put the engine cover on. Look at this fine, reliable boat. Amazing. Just amazing. Look how whisper quiet that is, too. Just slide her into gear. Ease into her. It's a good boat. That sharp V on the front, she really slices through the water. You wanna go see that Osprey? Like 
Get away from me. I am protected. What a perfect spot though. Turned out to be just such spectacular weather. Look at this. Clouds in the sky and the sun is coming back through as it's setting. Hard to believe this used to be a steel mill back in the day. Roebling owned it. He actually built this whole town, Roebling, New Jersey. Built all the houses for his workers and such. Or their workers, the whole family owned it. John A. Roebling. Let's do a top speed run. You can see we're doing one mile an hour as we're floating out with the tide. We can't trim up, and that's not helping the case, but let's see what she does. a good sunset spot oh yeah it's beautiful right yeah. it's amazing just coming around the bend like it was all over the trees and that's just perfect spot just around the river bend beyond the shore isn't that pocahontas you know i gotta say herman if you're watching this hats off to you for the, the fine craftsmanship like look, look at this it's got the locker in there this this plate obviously wasn't factory. He put this on and put the steering into it and this little piece of wood for the clock. I just think he did a great job. You don't this. think he just put that in to cover a hole? I think this is some fine craftsmanship and he uh, he really had his heart in the work he was doing on this boat. I love it. So much that it's now available for sale. <laughs> for... <laughs> I'm going to say 1000 bucks. Clean title for the trailer and boat. What do you think, babe? Up it a little bit? I mean, it runs good. $1,000. Anybody who wants this boat, YouTube special, $1,000. I'll be putting it on Marketplace for $1,500. So, it's a good deal. I think it deserves some more TLC that, quite frankly, I have a very short attention span and I get bored of things quick. Except for Jen, I don't get bored of her. That camera doesn't do it justice, huh? Nope. Back up, bring it around. No! <laughs> First test ride went pretty good. I'd say a-okay. Here we are next day and gonna take it out for another rip. This is actually a new storage yard. I'm, I'm renting short term. That uh, guy kind of just put a fence up and put some millings down and got a good deal. 
you know, I can store some junk here, an airboat, and whatever stuff I don't use on a daily basis. This is up for sale. And uh, actually, so I was looking for the title and registration on, on this, or the title for the trailer and the boat. And I, I guess I got confused on all the free boats because all I have is a previous registration on this. So if anybody watching this video is interested, I would take actually 500 bucks for this. I just put it up for 800 on Marketplace today, so it may may not still be available. But that's that's a deal, especially if you need this for parts for yours or something. Say you have one of these OMCs around. Um, anyway, let's take it out today because I'd like to hook that tank up, get that working, and honestly, it was just it was just a fun ripper. So as so I was showing you last night with this trailer, it doesn't have a V in the center or not much of one. So if you don't get onto these rollers perfectly. You will put a hole right in the keel, which you can see, I think I did this damage last night. Yeah, I skinned skinned that a little bit. Well, that's gonna need to be glassed over again for anybody. I mean, honestly, it should be a better job than that anyway. This guy just pulled up with his Aqua Sport 215. Brand new Honda 225 VTEC on there. Making us look bad over here. Got your boy Downstater ADV in the house. Everybody loves his, his jokes. <laughs> I'll shut up, I swear. <laughs> he does some of the finest filming available in the industry. When we were down here on the, uh, what was that piece of junk? <laughs> Which the one? The wet bike. <laughs> How many he got just the most crispiest footage you could possibly get. Oh, yeah. Floating partially submerged in the water, the wet bike leaps to the surface with a twist of the throttle. That's a Honda, like, Civic engine in there. That's why it's so quiet. Sounds nice. Before I fix it, man, three years, man, too much headache, man, buy a new one. Well, no how more, much? No more two strokes? No, no more. How much did that one cost you? Uh, 21,000. 21, wow, that's what, yeah, damn. that's what I thought. I was thought. thinking, like, yeah, that's crazy. It's nice, though. Good, good investment. Yeah, I figured it was that much. I mean, that literally has a Honda Civic engine in it. Like, I'm not even kidding. The block of that $21, is... $21,000. Yeah, I mean... I was saying like fifteen. dollars The technology in those new motors, though, it's it's no joke. We got her hooked back up to the tank. I'll see if we can get it to pull through that filter. And this primer, uh, the check valve seems to be working now. So, yeah. Oh! Okay, we got a little bit of a gas leak coming out of this hose. Oops. We'll just cut it short since we have plenty of room here hopefully it doesn't shoot in my face no. oh. oh we got a gusher and meanwhile that guy's just cruising down the river with his honda engine oh yeah just worry free and here we are polluting and wasting our time tinkering with a dinosaur but this is more fun you know this is boating anybody that tells you otherwise is, is lying is, is having too much fun <laughs> Let's see if this pulls from the tank anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, it's filling that filter up there. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, she's a she's a Look rock. at all that air coming out though. Maybe I just didn't put enough gas in the tank. Is the tank empty, bro? <laughs> We're hooked to this tank now. Since we need to get a little bit more in there, but the, the pump is hooked up and all that. So this is tie a little granny knot there. Good to go. Yeah. Now we can see how much gas we have. I was gonna pour that in this tank, but then we might run out. So by the way, this boat does not have a uh, choke on it. When you push the button, you hear the click. There's actually a little solenoid that opens and shoots fuel right there. You hear that? And, and you go, Shh. so it's shooting gas in and that's how it primes, or you can manually prime it opening this and that shoots gas in there. Oh, it should just fire right up. Look at that. Reliable, huh? A lot of debris out today. We're gonna take her for a good long ride all the way down to Bristol. Probably cruise mid throttle. Yeah, we're, we're just passing this flipped over boat on the side of the river. Kind of gonna motor over real quick and see what happened. Holy crap. It's really shallow toward this shore usually though at low tide. Of course we're not worried about this boat too much. Ooh. Oh. 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 Wow. Somebody like patched it with plywood and put spray foam around it or something. Maybe they, they did that fix to plan to try to get it back. Maybe. Is that plywood? Yeah. 
That's what? Get on fuel. Ooh. Not good. Not good. Not good at all. <laughs> we made it to Bristol and that's how much fuel it burned. Coast Guard's here. Maybe they'll have some gas for us. Now we, we actually do have some in here. Probably enough to get back with, I think. Not yeah. At all. Yeah, it'll be alright. Is the tide pushing in or out right now? It's gonna start coming in, but it's, I think it's slack tide right now. Swing around and slam into the Beautiful. The other nice thing about an old junky free boat is you don't really have to put the fenders out. Exactly. Actually, this dock's a perfect height too. Look at that pub. Look at that part job, man. That's, that's Look at this. Bad. The uh, the rub rail meets right up. Perfect. We'll still put the fenders out, oh. but nice job. We made it. I know there's some gas in this tank, so we're going to just, instead of siphoning them, I'm going to push some pressure in the, the vent and uh, and we'll see what we can get out. Yeah, what we got? It's, it's going. going. Yeah, plenty of gas coming out of there. Listen to that. What's up, man? What's going on? Yeah, it's... we're just uh, we had some fuel problems, so we're uh, siphoning it out of the, out of the, the tank here. Is all, yeah. <laughs> you need anything? You guys good? No, no, we should. Uh, yeah, we should be all right. What are you guys, uh, Coast Guard or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. What are you, what are you guys out? Uh, you on TV? Or, uh... <laughs> nah, we're up here every once in a while yeah yeah i talked sure. to you guys the other day actually i want to buy that thing when you guys sell it yeah do it man i know i heard they're going to auction them soon right yeah that's what i heard yeah they yeah yeah heck yeah that's all right, awesome that's uh that's all she wrote that's everything in the tank that's everything huh yeah it was just blowing all right out. that's not guessing thanks though. man appreciate you <laughs> they see us siphoning into a freaking weed can <laughs> <laughs> a weed sprayer can. <laughs> oh boy. Totally USGS approved. Yes, this is FAA would not have an issue with this. The F FFA? The FFA. <laughs> Love this thing. She's a beaut. We like fishing. When I saw the Coast Guard there, I didn't think it was a great idea to pull up, but apparently Alex talked to them the other night and Coast Guards are it's good people. They're good no. guys. They're good guys. They came over, we're blowing our fuel tank. <laughs> whole dock probably smelled like gas too. That's probably why they came over. I don't know. Well, we had a nice dinner at the cantina and now it's back off on the river, but Coast Guard is still there. So we'll just untie, float away in the darkness. They won't even see us. Yeah. Or get the lights working. The cleat. There she here. is waiting for us. What should we name this boat? Hernan? So for the lights, not seeing a switch anywhere here. It's for the bilge. Let's see if they're even hooked up. Oh yeah, we got some wires coming back. Right to here. Look at that. We just have to hook these up and we'll be fine. And we got these wires from the all-around light in the back and then this is will be positive heading up front. We'll just direct wire everything. Now we can idle on in and we made it with that much gas to go without an inch in there. It's a good way to run a motor lean and you know melt a piston or something. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> All right guys well that's gonna wrap this one up. 
boat is still available as of the time of posting this video. $500 is the YouTube price, or if you want to make an offer, feel free. If you're serious about buying it, it's located just north of Philadelphia. And you know, maybe somebody could use it for just the engine or parts, or if you got a private lake, it could be really fun. Use the trailer, whatever. $500 is an absolute deal for that. Just covering a little bit of the time and parts putting into it and whatnot. So uh, I know that the Gus man over here didn't make uh, an appearance in the video. It was, they say that this unsafe boats, you know, maiden voyage is not safe for you, buddy. So about to take him out for a run in the field. And I want to thank you guys big time for, for tuning into the video. Uh, good news coming on that 67 Cadillac. Got a buyer lined up. It's actually going to be an art project for Drexel. Should be a fun video. Yes, Gus, we're going to go run around in your field. You know, I should note the boat does not include the battery or a gas tank well the gas tank that's in there that's fine but not the auxiliary one i was using it's a uh it's a mechanic special guys it's not not for the faint of heart uh, i actually offered it to my neighbor for free you know since he was storing it all that time but he's he's not looking for a project 